1929, a group of historians stumbled across a forgotten artifact deep in the vaults of an Ottoman palace. It was a map, hand-drawn, centuries old. But what stunned them wasn't its age, it was what it showed. A stretch of coastline, perfectly shaped, seemingly modern, labelled in ancient script and below it, the outline of a continent. One that hadn't been discovered yet, one that shouldn't have been there, and one that appeared without ice. How could a map from 1513 show Antarctica before it was discovered, centuries before anyone believed it was covered in ice? Welcome to History Footnotes and Fiascos, where the forgotten, the forbidden and the flat-out strange get a second look. Today's episode, The Piri Race Map, a document that defies explanation and hints at a history far older than we've been told. Our story begins not in Antarctica, nor in South America, but in the Ottoman Empire. Piri Reis was no ordinary mapmaker. He was an admiral in the Ottoman Navy, a seasoned navigator, and a skilled cartographer with access to the finest knowledge of his time. In 1513, he drew a world map on a piece of gazelle skin, the details were extraordinary, but the sources were even more so. Rees claimed he compiled the map using around 20 older charts, some from Portuguese and Arabic explorers, others from ancient times. He even noted that one came from the era of Alexander the Great, and then there was the Spanish sailor. According to his notes, Race and his uncle captured a Spaniard who had sailed with Columbus. That sailor provided information about the New World, maps, coastlines and navigational data that hadn't yet reached most of Europe. Race took all this and stitched it together, into a map unlike anything the world had seen, and then it vanished. The map would not surface again for more than 400 years. In 1929, renovations were underway at the Topkapi Palace in Istanbul. As workers cleared out the old rooms of the Imperial Treasury, they came across a bundle of old documents. Among them was the partial remains of Piri Reis's map. What scholars noticed first was the depiction of South America. The coastline was shockingly accurate, especially for a map drawn just two decades after Columbus's first voyage. But that wasn't the strangest part. Beneath South America, there appeared to be another landmass, a curving coastline, mountainous terrain, unfrozen, ice-free. Could it be Antarctica? And if it was, who had mapped it, and how? The accuracy of the map South American coastline was unsettling. For 1513, it shouldn't have been possible. The Andes were shown as a continuous chain of mountains. Major rivers traced inland, including some that would later be confirmed by modern explorers. Ports, bays and capes aligned eerily well with today's satellite data. And yet, that wasn't the most debated part. The lower portion of the map appeared to show a landmass stretching east from South America, right where Antarctica would be. But this version of Antarctica wasn't the frozen wasteland we know today. It was temperate, detailed, and seemingly ice-free. Some researchers pointed out that the coastline matched what we now know as Queen Maud Land, only revealed beneath the ice in the 20th century using seismic surveys, which raises the impossible question, how could anyone in 1513 have known what Antarctica looked like beneath the ice?
One theory suggests that it wasn't Piri Reis who knew, but whoever had created the maps he used as sources, and that's where the story gets stranger. Scattered across the surviving fragment are handwritten notes, marginal inscriptions in Ottoman Turkish made by Piri Reis himself. In them, he reveals how he created the map. He writes that it was compiled from more than 20 charts and sea maps, some from Portuguese sailors, some from Arab geographers, and some from sources that were already centuries old in his time. One source, he claims, dated back to the era of Alexander the Great. Another came from a sailor who had sailed with Columbus, captured by Rees and his uncle during a naval skirmish. That sailor described lands across the Atlantic and shared charts taken from Spanish expeditions to the New World. What emerges is a kind of cartographic collage, a patchwork of global knowledge stitched together from a dozen different traditions, some of it recent, some of it very old, and some completely unexplained. Even more bizarre are the inconsistencies. Some areas, like South America, are incredibly accurate. Others are distorted or show obvious artistic liberties. Some coastlines flow into one another in impossible ways. It's as if Piri Reis didn't fully understand what he had. Or maybe he did, and was trying to preserve fragments of a much older legacy. Whatever the case, the inscription suggests something unsettling, that the knowledge used to create parts of this map came from a time when Antarctica if that's what it was, wasn't buried beneath a mile of ice. And if that's true, history may not be what we think it is. At first glance, the Piri race map looks like any old world chart, ornate, hand-drawn, full of elegant flourishes. But the longer you look, the stranger it becomes. There are illustrations of sea monsters in the oceans, their serpentine forms rising from the waves. There are ships drifting across the Atlantic, drawn with exaggerated sails and gleaming prows. Islands appear and vanish between coastlines, some of them real, others completely imaginary. And then there are the creatures. Some scholars argue they were symbolic, representations of unexplored dangers or the unknown itself. But others see them as a reflection of the era's mindset, where the boundaries between fact and myth were still blurred. The map is also influenced by Islamic miniature art, richly stylized, dense with symbols and often layered with meaning. It's a blend of science and superstition, knowledge and imagination. But beyond the artistry, the real mystery lies in the map's accuracy and where that accuracy came from. Some believe the answer lies in lost civilizations. The idea is simple and unsettling, that before our recorded history, there existed seafaring peoples capable of mapping the world with astonishing precision. They may have lived during the last Ice Age, long before Sumer, Egypt or Babylon. According to this theory, fragments of their knowledge survived, passed down through generations, copied and recopied, until they found their way into the hands of explorers, scholars, and eventually Piri Rice. That's where the map becomes more than just a curiosity. It becomes evidence. Evidence, some say, of an advanced global culture that predates everything we know. One of the most famous proponents of this idea was Charles Hapgood. In the 1950s, he proposed that the Earth's crust had shifted thousands of years ago, rapidly and catastrophically. 
This pole shift would have moved entire continents, turning warm regions into frozen wastelands. According to Hapgood, if such a shift had occurred, Antarctica might once have been ice-free. And if a civilization existed during that time, they could have mapped it. Even Albert Einstein entertained the possibility. He wrote a foreword to Hapgood's book, praising the boldness of the theory, even if it wasn't widely accepted. The implications are profound. If the Piri Reis map shows an ancient Antarctica, then our understanding of history, of civilization, climate, even geology, might be fundamentally flawed. But not everyone agrees. Mainstream historians and geographers argue that the map doesn't show Antarctica at all. They say the supposed southern continent is just a misinterpretation of South America, perhaps extended by error or artistic license. Others believe it's simply a product of medieval cartographic distortion, when maps were more art than science. Still questions remain. Why does the coastline fit so well with modern scans of Antarctica beneath the ice? Why do parts of the map show features unknown in Piri Reis's time? And how could a 16th century admiral with limited tools and second-hand sources create a map that still baffles experts today? For all the studies, debates and theories, the Piri Reis map remains unsolved. A third of it is missing. We don't know what the rest might have shown. Could it have included more of the Americas, more of Antarctica, or something else entirely? We also don't know why it was forgotten. After being drawn in 1513, it vanished into obscurity. It sat untouched in the Ottoman archives for over four centuries. Was it just overlooked or was it deliberately hidden? And what about the sources Piri Reis used? The ones he claimed were older than any surviving maps, going back to ancient times. If they existed, they've been lost or destroyed. The map raises more questions than it answers. Was Piri Reis preserving fragments of a forgotten legacy? Was he copying the last remnants of an ancient world? Or was it all coincidence, an accident of lines, curves, and hopeful interpretations? Whether the Piri Reis map is misunderstood, misinterpreted, or something far more extraordinary, one truth remains. It challenges us. It challenges our view of history. It challenges our sense of time. And it reminds us that sometimes the past leaves behind puzzles we may never solve. You've been watching History Footnotes and Fiascos, where we uncover the chilling, the curious, and the nearly forgotten corners of the past. What do you think the Piri race map really shows? Let us know your theories in the comments. And if you haven't already, leave us a like, consider subscribing and tapping the notification bell to show the channel some support, and to make sure you don't miss what's coming next. Until next time, stay curious.